Okay, thank you. Uh, thank you so much for that introduction. And uh, Jolien, thank you for sharing such, wow, really moving images. Um, it was quite incredible to see so many tree sculptures. So I uh, certainly feel that um, my design is hopefully in good company. Um, I am going to also uh, launch some screen sharing. So if you just bear with me a moment. Um, right, hopefully that's worked. Let's go full screen. Okay, there we go. Um, so I'm really pleased. Um, I was really delighted to be selected to create the design for the memorial. Um, it's such an important and really incredible project to be a part of. I'm going to share some of the research and insight into the design rationale um, just through a few quick slides. Um, as Leslie said, we have been offered two sites in uh, Prince Street Gardens in Edinburgh by the council. And um, the, this is the preferred site. So this is to the right of the Ross Bandstand as you're looking at the castle for those that are familiar with Prince Street Gardens. The design brief was to create a memorial that can sit in amongst the heavy, dark, war memorials in the gardens. And there's quite a few. Um, and to create a contrasting dialogue and conversation with these war monuments through its form and patina, whilst recognizing the history of conscientious objection and the importance of peace building. The memorial brief was to be open and accessible, non-judgmental and inclusive, um, especially as the history of conscientious objection is uh, so wide ranging and ongoing, um, and it all was to be, to be cited within a designated reflection space. Early in the process, I began an in-depth research, uh, period of research. During this time, I struck on this quote about a 1916 emergency meeting in London in support of COs and war resistors. During the meeting, there was an angry crowd gathering outside trying to break in. Um, the chairman of the meeting asked the 2000 strong audience not to clap or cheer as um, it was aggravating the crowd outside. Instead, he asked the audience to show their support for the speakers silently. The quote reads, no one who was present will forget the effect of this. And the distinguished speakers were greeted with thousands of fluttering handkerchiefs, making the soft sound of a rising and falling breeze. I found this deeply inspiring and very, very visual. Uh, thinking of the audience fluttering their handkerchiefs, I found it to be a strong symbol um, which led me to do further research on handkerchiefs. And for anyone that's unfamiliar with the memorial design, you get a bit of a clue what it's about with the, uh, the background of this slide. My research on handkerchiefs led me to uh, discover two really interesting strands of information about handkerchiefs. Firstly, um, handkerchiefs were used in the First and Second World Wars as a symbol of family support and in a very personal way. It was quite common for families to send hankies to their loved ones on the front lines. And equally, um, hankies were being embroidered by local French uh, and Belgian women, which soldiers were able to buy and send back home. And this slide shows you some um, of the war handkerchiefs that were being made. The second piece of handkerchief related inspiration came when I struck on this particular tree, which unsurprisingly is called the handkerchief tree. It is a really beautiful tree and um, quite unusual as it has these hanging white bracts, which you can see from the branches there. And they are very, um, well, they look like handkerchiefs and they do flutter in the breeze, which for me was very reminiscent of the original quote um, about the 1916 emergency meeting. This particular tree uh, is also a recognized peace tree. Uh, its other name is the dove tree after an ancient Chinese legend about a woman whose name I'm probably going to pronounce wrong, um, Wang Zhaoyong, who through her own personal sacrifice brought uh, years of peace to two warring tribes. Um, and this particular tree also feels pertinent because 
it's a particularly resilient tree. It has its seed, its seed pods have to go through two freezing winters in order to be able to germinate. So um, that sort of resilience felt like a very relevant um, connection and symbol for the memorial. With these elements in mind, I designed a peace tree. I decided to, I decided to design a peace tree based on the handkerchief tree. Uh, the tree will have 30 hanging handkerchief bracts. Uh, it will be modelled and cast in bronze and the embroidered handkerchiefs will also faithfully be reproduced in bronze as well. And you can get a sense of that in the left of the image. Each handkerchief will be an opportunity to share a piece of the history of conscientious objection through unique individually uh, embroidered images and designs. You can see a few possible examples here, including the Friends Ambulance Unit on the right. Um, as conscription is still ongoing in some countries, I've spoken to a present day uh, female CO who went to prison for refusing to serve in Israel. And she's given input into the design. Um, you can see her contribution in the center in the bottom. She translated the words conscientious objector into Hebrew. Okay. Um, here are some more examples of what might be embroidered onto the handkerchiefs to share the history of conscientious objection. We have also been welcoming, uh, welcoming and inviting suggestions and ideas for what the designs might include, with positive feedback and input from relatives of uh, COs. A real mix of recognisable imagery and then also perhaps lesser known um, emblems will make the tree immediately accessible, but also encourage visitors to explore and discover more about COs, encouraging hopefully longer term uh, learning engagement. The tree will represent past, present and future COs, with the newest growth at the top of the tree left blank for those that are yet to make the decision to become a CO. A symbolic number of leaves could be created to, to perhaps represent the 235 Edinburgh COs in World War I. An accompanying website will have a page per hanky, so each handkerchief's story can be more widely shared and understood. The website address will be very carefully incorporated into the memorial design, so it's discreet but also readily available. This uh, image that you're seeing now is a mock-up of how a handkerchief bract might look when it's cast in bronze. The real handkerchief tree bracts have this unusual pit uh, seed stone in the center of them, um, which as you can see here, could pot potentially be reinterpreted as um, a piece of Aberdeenshire granite. Now that would symbolize the COs that were sent to dice in Aberdeenshire, um, and they were sent up there to go and break rocks to create road metal um, in a work camp. So these little nuggets of granite would be linking back to that. Um, and it would also represent how World War I COs sowed the seeds for the rights of present day COs. Here you can see all the different design elements together, including the seating. Um, the reflection space is paved to designate the area and make it fully accessible uh, all year round as it is on a bit of a slope and potentially could be a bit wet. So um, the paved area will make it accessible all year with easy disabled access as well factored in. The reflection space will be ground level um, and circular in order to be welcoming. It will be enclosed by a granite seat the seat will be, made for Ab will be made from Aberdeenshire granite, linking again back to the DICE World War I COs. It will have an inscription along the back of the seat rest, um, dedicating it to conscientious objectors and all who oppose war. Um, the seat will be made from a bespoke, uh, smoothly curved gabion uh, basket, which will be made specifically for this. Um, and it will represent, again, um, the World War I COs by having the, the Gabian basket filled with crushed granite. Um, and in, by putting the granite into this Gabian design, it 
brings ideas about defences because gabions are used as sea defences and um, other types of defences so it brings in this idea of defending the rights of COs. This uh, is the model of the memorial. The peace tree will start um, much like this as a bronze coloured tree and it will be allowed to naturally patina over time so it will naturally gain a green organic colour to it. Um, this green patina is very much an intentional choice as um, it will contrast quite strongly with the other, uh, with the war memorials that are in Princess Street Gardens and hopefully it will create this contrast that is much lighter and hopefully much more hopeful. Um, the tree will represent the ongoing network of COs, war resistors and peace builders and how together their contributions can grow and flourish. As Leslie mentioned, progress on the memorial is currently ongoing, um, hampered by the pandemic, and also, of course, um, still waiting on the final designs from the council regarding the developments, the overall developments of the gardens. Um, fundraising is still ongoing, so for anyone that might want to make a contribution, uh, that's possible to do that through the Opposing War Memorial website. Um, I am just going to finish up by saying last year we held three embroidery workshops in Edinburgh, Glasgow and Dundee. They were free embroidery workshops and they invited participants of all ages and backgrounds to come together and um, design their own handkerchief and embroider their handkerchief, uh, allowing an opportunity to have conversations and uh, exchanges about what maybe should be included or could be included in the, the handkerchief designs for the, for the tree. Um, the, the workshops were particularly engaging and they really were rewarding with a lot of um, really great input. Uh, there was one particular little boy who stands out in my mind um, as he was, a, he was a refugee and he, it was his first time experiencing embroidery which was really quite amazing and he really took to it um, and by the end of the session he was asking for a, an embroidery kit for Christmas um, having just fallen in love with embroidery so you know it's this kind of really genuine engagement takes the project to even new and unexpected areas that just makes it so worthwhile and just shows that you know people can connect with it they are connecting with it and they're inputting into it um, we are looking at potentially holding another embroidery workshop next year online. So anyone that you know, might like to take part in that one um, can, can join the mailing, mailing list. So if you'd like to, to sign up, then if you could please get in touch with Jane and her email address is admin at peaceandjustice.org.uk. 